welcome to MGL Training, where to, um, in this video I'm going to be covering the Cold Water Learner Outcome 1.1. If you've watched the introduction video, you will already know that this is going to be covering sources of supply and water quality. Again, please remember, if you do find this video helpful, please remember to drop a like, leave a comment, and even help hit that subscribe button to help support the channel and future videos. By the end of this session, you should, will be able to do the following, right? State the key stages in the rainwater cycle. So it's nice and straightforward. So we're going to cover a few bits and pieces on this. We're going to go through the basics, but then we're going to cover the cycle. So basics. Water is colourless, odourless, tasteless. You will all be saying now, but I can taste it. Yeah. Once it's been treated, it's got chlorine in or it's gone through various sediments, things like that, you pick up that flavour. But typically water is colourless, odourless, tasteless. It picks up the flavours as it does stuff. Water is a compound made up of two hydrogen atoms attached to a single oxygen atom. So it's this little bit here. And because of this, we are denoted as the following. H2, so there's two H's, O. So H2O. This is the chemical symbol for water. Right, so now we're going to cover a little bit more. So we're going to start looking at what water and how it is on the Earth. So the Earth holds 1,300 trillion litres of fresh water on the ground. That's a lot of water. And a further 13,650 trillion litres in the form of water vapour. That's a lot of vapour. And this is why we have these damp feelings <laughs> around us. About 1,100 trillion litres of water vapour, uh, water evaporates, sorry, into the atmosphere worldwide every day. So 1,100 trillion litres of water turns to vapour every day around the world. Water has a number of special properties, which we have covered in a scientific principles. But we, you know, we will go through these. If you haven't seen the videos already, please go back and watch them. If you've already seen them, please carry on. You'll understand what I'm talking about. But one important property to remember here is that water is a, a solvent. OK, it breaks things down. So as it's going through things, so as you can see by this pretty picture here, this river has been traveling through this valley for a very long time. And as it's done so, it's dissolved and broken down materials, the dirt, everything as it goes through. And it's slowly got deeper and deeper and deeper into this gorge. And this is how the gorges are made. So it soaks up the material the mi and minerals. And that's what makes all our waters different. Again, we will cover these in further videos. Right. So how water is distributed across the earth. It's nice and straightforward. 3% of the water that's on this planet, Earth, is fresh water. The other 97 is saline or sea water. OK, so it's got salt in it and it is very potent. Right. So 3% is fresh water. We're just going to focus on the fresh water. We don't really, you know, we do care about the sea, but we don't care at this moment in time. Surface water of this 3% is 0.3%. So what's on the surface? So if you've watched the introduction video, you will know I'm referring to rivers, streams, lakes, that kind of thing. Yeah, river streams and lakes. That is 0.3% of this fresh water that is on Earth. 30.7% of this is underground. So these are aquifers under the ground of water that we have. And 30.7% of that is underground of fresh water. The rest of it is ice caps and glaciers, 69% of it. Nice and straightforward. So we're going to go into the surface water, as I say, a little bit more. So rivers, 2% of that. 0.3 is rivers. 11% is swamps. And the rest is in lakes, which are 87%. Now, the next slide, we're going to go through the water cycle. This is one of the important bits that we'll be going through and the main goal of this. So we've gone through the basics now. We've done to cover the percentages on where the water is disputed across the earth. And I'm very proud of this little uh, video that you can see at the moment. The sun 
basically warms up the water. As the water warms up, it starts to evaporate. This water vapour then goes up into the atmosphere, which then starts to condense and produce clouds. And as it gets heavier, this then turns into precipitation and basically rain or snow, which then lands on the ground, which then can produce rivers. These rivers will then go all the way back to the sea and it is basically a never-ending cycle. So even when we get it through our taps, we then put it down the drains, it goes off to be treated, it basically ends back in the river, these rivers then go back to the sea and we keep repeating the cycle. So we're always reusing our water, so to speak, but the evaporation part helps clean that water. Okay, so this is our key thing. So we've got three areas that we've got to recover or remember, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Nice, easy, quick and easy to remember. So just a quick recap, what are the key stages of rainwater? Evaporation, so I've got my lovely little kettle there. As it's boiling, you see the steam, that is evaporation. Condensation, as you can see it on the windows, that is where the steam cools down and turns back into a liquid which then starts the precipitation part, as you can see my umbrella, very wet, which is raining. Nice, easy. Just remember them main three there. Right, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment. As soon as I get time, I will answer them. Remember, I am a practicing teacher. I also am a plumber and gas engineer, so I do actually do my own work as well. So when I get time, I answer as soon as I can. Someone else also might not be able to help you understand what you're asking. If the answer's correct, I will leave it. If it's missing something, I will add more to it. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this. So if you have found it useful, please remember, drop a like, leave a comment, and even hit that subscribe button and help support the channel and future videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.